Welcome to MacBreak Studio, and we're here in the digital barn, and it's not somebody's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> not somebody's birthday. No. It's not episode number 500. No, but we're using this as an object lesson to talk about knits and right. high dynamic range, which Final Cut supports in spades now. It's amazing. So we're going to hear about HDR. Yeah, so we want to talk about high dynamic range video. Uh -huh. And uh, the reason for the candle is you can't talk about it without knowing what a knit is. It's very, very important. So a, a knit is a measurement of brightness, of display brightness. Yeah. And uh, It's not an insult. <laughs> Don't be a knit. <laughs> it should make a sort of, insult, I know, right? I know. Yeah. Don't be a knit. I know, but knits are really important here. So one knit is measured as something called a candela per square meter, a candela per square meter. Say that. It's the yeah. amount, so just think of it this way. It's the amount of light that a candle spreads on a square meter surface. So this is putting out one knit of brightness here. Okay. One knit, okay? So that's all we need the candle for. So you can blow it out. You can leave, right. you want to leave right. it going? Yeah, okay. kind of okay. adds a nice so, atmosphere. So here's the thing, one knit, okay? What, you have to get a sense for how bright things are. And I have a, a couple examples to show you to uh, display this. Now this is a, from a Dolby Vision paper and I just thought I would use it because I'm giving this source. I think it's a great example. So we can see in this, in this in reality, not in this photograph, but in reality, we've got any range, any range from a little under 200 nits in the center here, 145 nits in the background, up to f almost 15,000 nits where the sun is reflecting off the bright areas of this flower. Now in the photo or on the screen, none of that's happening. The screen is limited to maybe 500 nits. Right, this map what it's, cap what it's capable of displaying. So, but in real life, uh, brightness, values vary dramatically. Another example of that, if we look at this little table, is that um, the, you know, a piece of white paper might be 50 nits. A computer screen is 100 to 300, although a lot of Mac screens go as high as 500 nits. Um, a UHD TV, and this is where things get really interesting, is our new televisions are capable of going up to like a thousand nits. Consumer and, televisions. Yeah, consumer TVs you can buy today that are UHD. So, you know, they're 4K. Did they even rated UHD by TVs. nits on the... Box. They'll say how many nits, and it's important because that's what allows you to do HDR. In fact, HDR is defined by the spec as something that can do over a thousand nits technically um, to be able to do HDR. And you see clouds, 35,000. Our maximal, maximum tolerance is 50,000. That's why you can't look at the sun because the sun you can see is 1.6 billion nits. But we can tolerate about 50,000. Now here's, yeah. here's the thing, okay? And if you look um, at the sun, you're a nit. Yeah, so yeah. the... The deal is that if we look at how HDR works, and um, I'm going to start here. I, think, I call this the squeeze, okay? Because if you look at the overall workflow, we go from acquiring footage to editing, grading, mastering, to distributing. And then I, I broke out display and viewing into two separate categories. You might think, well, what's the difference between display and view? You know, you display view. But right. here's, here's the deal. When we acquire footage right now, we're able to acquire in HDR. So if you shoot in log or raw format, you're already acquiring footage in 14 stops of brightness in that, in that range, right. 14 uh, stops. And um, so you're already capturing HDR material. Our new displays that we have, these UHD TVs, can display all that dynamic range. They're mm -hmm. capable of doing it. The problem is when we're editing, we're editing a compressed version. It's clamped down. It's squeeze down right. to a hundred nit maximum. 100 nits is the maximum that you, can, that you are allowed to display. And the reason is the distribution uh, spec Rec. 709 for HD and Rec. 601 for SD is 100 nits. Although that's changing. YouTube's now supporting HDR. And well, that's not Rec. 709. That's not, I'm right. saying when you go oh. uh, broadcast television, anything that's broadcast television can't go over 100 nits. Right. Right. It goes back to the time of having CRTs they were restricted to 100 nits. So we're still living in a CRT world when it comes to turning on your TV and mm. watching broadcast material. It's stuck at that level. So even though our, our display is capable of showing this broad dynamic range, these really bright saturated colors, we don't get it. And yeah. because, it's because of the spec. Now that's changing, okay? This is a representation of all the color values that we're capable of seeing. It's, it's an individual spectrum. Right. You mean the visible spectrum? The vi this is the visible light spectrum that right. we're capable of seeing. This triangle inside is what's 
able to be re reproduced in Rec. 709. So it's, much, it's about 33% of total of what's visible. And that's what we've been working with all these years. So when you shoot something, it's clamped down in the, in the chroma values, right. the color, the brightness, the hue, the hue and saturation. Now, there's a new spec, Rec. 2020, which is also called Wide Gamut. And 10.3, uh, Final Cut Pro 10.3 supported it, Wide yeah. Gamut. Yep. So already in 10.3, so you could shoot Wide Gamut. But the thing is, there's another component to this, not just hue and saturation, but brightness as well, okay? So you can look at brightness levels going from, you know, up to 10,000 nits. So there's a new specification for doing HDR, and it goes to a maximum of 10,000. It's a log scale. That's why it goes 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. So currently, when we do Rec. 709 footage, when you're shooting in any format, log, raw, something compressed, it's being delivered in this volume right here. At 100 nits 100 top. nits of brightness, that's yeah. it. And in this in this That's a triangle, nice three-dimensional representation of that color space. space. But now we have the capability of taking that full Rec. 2020 up to a maximum of 10,000 nits. Now in reality, most TVs aren't capable of going over 1,000, right. but that's a huge difference from 100. It's not 10 times because it's logarithmic, it's more like yeah. three and a half times the brightness, but it's a significant difference. So if you, have, if you had like a burning log fire, remember like you, you could bring up on YouTube the fire? Yes. If you have it at whatever, 5,000 nits, yeah. you probably aren't even, you're not even gonna want yeah, to look at it. It's gonna hurt your eyes. eyes. Right. <laughs> yeah. Today, when you shoot video today, a piece of paper in the sunlight looks as bright as the sun. They're both 100 nits, and that's just not reality. But now we can do this. So we'll look at how we can do it in Final Cut Pro. The thing is, you need to be able to monitor HD, right. HDR, sorry, HDR, because your computer screen can't display HDR. It's just that's not capable. Right. So what you're going to need to do this in Final Cut are two things. First of all, you're going to need uh, to properly monitor. You're going to need a monitor that supports HDR up to 1,000 nits. And currently, this is the uh, really the one that's out there that's being used the 30 most. 30 grand? This, yeah, it's expensive. It's expensive. So if you want, thirty so, grand. Yeah, but this, you know, yeah. this was the case with HD monitors not that long ago, right? That is true. So this is it's all going to change. Yes. I mean, this is to me, this is a bigger deal than four K. Right. Is this HDR? When you combine four K and HDR together, it's really tremendous. So you need that specifically for Final Cut. You also need this AJA IO four K box that will allow you to output um, HDR over HDMI and it will recognize the two main standards, which is a whole other discussion of what are the different standards of HDR. Nice. Okay, but you, you've got to have these two pieces of equipment to really do this properly. But here's how it works in Final Cut. So in Final Cut, I'll create a new library, and I'll call it um, my HDR library, to be very fancy here. Now, when I create that in the library inspector, we can say it says standard. Okay. We can see it says standard right there, but if I click modify, I can make the the library wide gamut HDR. Right, and that was back in 10.3, what you were Well, 10.3, it was just wide gamut. Yeah. Now it's wide gamut HDR. HDR. Huge difference. Okay. Huge difference because now we've got all this. The brightness the is a bigger deal than the color when you know when you combine this together. So I'll choose that. And now we have a wide gamut HDR library. So now when I add a new project to this library, and I'll just leave it as entitled, under the color space pop-up menu, I have three choices. I could do what we were able to do in 10.3, just wide gamut, and that's there for legacy purposes. Mm -hmm. um, or I can choose one of two standards for a wide gamut. The Rec. 2020 PQ is the Dolby standard, perceptual quantizing. Mm -hmm. That's a, it's a higher, it goes up to 10,000 nits. It's, um, it's extremely good. It's kind of the best one, but there's also licensing fees associated with it. So not everybody's adopting right. it, but that's kind of the gold standards. The other one that has come out um, you know, over the past year or so is, is Hybrid Log Gamma, or HLG. It's free, it's limited to 1,000 nits, it combines the standard log curve at lower values with um, this, uh, what's called a transfer function at the top end for the brightness, to compress the brightness right. values. So you choose whichever one you want to use, whatever your delivery target is, mm -hmm. and you can switch between them, but I'll choose PQ and say okay. So I've got a, a, a HDR project in an HDR library. Got it. So now I'm going to import a, a clip. Now you might say, oh, you need an HDR clip. Well, guess what? Any, any clip that is shot log is HDR. So I have something that was so shot with a GH4. It's a familiar clip we've seen here before, but I'm going to import it, and I'll add it to this project. 
And notice something that happened right away. Let me hide the browser there. The RGB parade, first of all, in the top left corner, it says Rec 2020 PQ. Right. So we know that. Look at the RGB parade. When I was clicked off of this, it was, it was in Luma, but now it's measured in nits up to 10,000. Wow. Okay. So under this pop-up menu, you can see that it's measured in nits. Right. So that's our, and that CD, by, white, by the way, is candela per square meter to bring us back, back to, to our, our candle. Back to our candle, right. See, I'm glad we didn't yeah. blow it out. Exactly. So now this is, this is still being compressed into the REC 709 standard, but we can expand that now. So in fact, we probably don't want to go all the way to 10,000 because TVs can't support it. So a kind of a cool thing here is if I move, let's say I want to target about 1,000 and click and I'll, that'll hold there. Oh, I so see. I can see I've got a target now. So with that target in place, uh, command six will bring me my color wheels because I changed the default there. And if I raise my highlights, I can go well beyond the 100 nit maximum for Rec. 709 yeah. and really expand the dynamic range. Of course, now, it's not going to look right on, you know, no, it looks the 500 terrible. nit monitor that you're watching. Right, right, it looks terrible on this monitor. It's blowing out the highlights because the monitor can't handle it. But if we were looking at our, an HDR monitor, we would see detail on those highlights. You can see in the waveform, it's retained. It's not yeah. clipping at 100. So if we had a $30,000 Sony monitor, this thing would look awesome. Yes. Now, one thing you can do um, if you don't have that monitor and you want to some sense of the detail is if you go to Preferences, uh, in the editing tab, sorry, in a playback, you can choose to show HDR as raw values. Let me move this over the way. And if I turn that on, it will show you the raw values of the HDR. So now I can see all the detail. That's really good. I can see toggling that on and off. Yeah. And hopefully there's a keyboard shortcut for that. It, well, it's dangerous. You have, because if you leave this on, you, you will not be to spec at all. Right. So th really you should be doing this to a monitor. So this is I'm describing this because not everybody's going to do it tomorrow because right. of the expense of the hardware, but this is what's coming. And you kind of need to be aware of it because HDR looks significant, significantly better. People can't necessarily tell the difference between um, like a 1080p TV and a 4K TV unless you're quite close. You have That's to be right. like, from, for a 16-inch TV, you have to be like five feet away right. to see the difference. But HDR, you can see the difference immediately if they're side by side. Yeah. So you want to be, just sort of be aware of um, it's all that how to it's use all the this. brightness. Yeah. So um, just one other thing I'll show you here is that in the effects browser under color, there's something called HDR tools. And I'll drop that on this clip. Go to the video inspector. And this gives us some options. By default, it's doing an HDR to Rec. 709. See, so it says SDR, because mm -hmm. Rec. 709 is standard dynamic range. Right. It's doing a tone map. Okay, it's bringing it into the Rec. 709 spec. In fact, see when it's applied, we're now down yeah. to 100 nits. You don't have to use this. You could do it manually. You could do a, duplicate the project and bring it. Well, that's why you had to do it in 10.3. Yes, yes. But you could do this. You could just apply this. It's kind of like a broadcast safe right. for, for standard dynamic range. I was range. just going to say, it's very similar. Right. Or you can also convert, if you're working in PQ, but you need to do an HLG deliverable, you can select that here to convert from one to the next. Okay, so this gives you the options. You can do it manually, but this gives you a quick and easy way to do it. You're still gonna to wanna to check your shots out, shot by shot. To me, this is exciting because we've already got footage that's high dynamic range. There's nothing you need to do on the acquisition side, although you do need to think about what you want to um, show off. Because usually you're using these, this expanded range for very specular highlights, really bright things, really saturated colors. But we're acquiring it today, and consumers today can see it on their TV. We just have to fix the middle of the chain, right. which Final which, Cut now supports. Which, yeah, the middle and also display, so. Well, it's there at the display. Right. It's but I'm saying like monitoring uh, in, in the editorial environment, being yeah, able to you're see gonna, all you're the detail. Right. right. It seems but we now, have, we now have a workflow for delivering something that we're already acquiring. And I'm, it, it's, we've talked about it enough for now, but color correction gets really fun in this environment. In fact, I have to give credit to um, Alexis Van Herkman which you can search, he's, he's done an amazing, we should put a link to it, an excellent article on all about HDR and the promise of HDR, which, uh, which I highly recommend everybody check out because it's really detailed. As you know, Alexis is very technically detailed. Yeah. So, right. so that's, that's a quick primer on HDR and Final Cut Pro 10. Awesome. Okay, well, uh, I don't have anything else to say, but <laughs> buy his training and learn 
even more about HDR. Yeah, we, we actually covered this in advanced yeah, color correction yeah, tutorial. Yeah, in advanced color correction tutorial. So I hope you uh, found that really useful. I did. I'm like, it's like sitting in for Professor, Professor Mark. So uh, like I was going to say, a lot of candle, y'all. We'll see you in the next episode of Mac Break Studio.